normally. I'm quick at that one. <clears throat> what I do primarily, now that I'm retired, I act as a legal consultant to all, the, all tribes throughout the Northwest. And one of the most important cases I covered about 10 years ago was called Free Richard Flores, the Yakima case. And I was stepping over there at that time. And they came to me because they knew I did a lot of legal work. And I, uh, I showed them Article 3 of the 1855 Treaty. And it says, all riverbed shall be free and clear for navigation. That would mean that we still own a riverbed. That also would mean we still own 350 feet on each side of the river. When the, when the case went through the court system, Washington State appealed it to the, to the Ninth Circuit Supreme Court. The Ninth Circuit threw it out, threw it out the door. We won our case. What that means primarily is it's up to the tribe to give the final decision on whether or not Magalhaes can go through the state. Now you want to keep in mind, in 1855, when these treaties were made, the state and the government were allowed to build roads through the reservation, but no jurisdiction was passed. They could build the roads and they would have to maintain them, but nothing else. In regards to that statement, for those of you that have taken notes, write down Article 19, Section 21 of the Idaho State Constitution. In that Constitution, it says, and it's called Indian Disclaimer Clause. Idaho State has no jurisdiction on those roads. None. Matter of fact, I made a note right here. The last case I helped the Yakima tribe out with was down in uh, Brownstown. And I, I, I determined it to them and I sent a report over to them. If the white man is in court pass, they can <coughs> legally arrest him. A white man. The court pass non reservation. And they upheld it. There is one more thing that I should bring out. I'm assuming that the Magalo truck drivers and the Magalo company does not have a permit to be on reservation. I believe it's in a 53 treaty, I'd have to look it up. What those treaties say, in order for a white man to be on a reservation, he must have a permit from the tribe. I might ask a council member, do you guys issue a permit for any white man on reservation yet? Answer is no. But keep in mind what I am saying. I speak with the spirit of grandma and grandpa. What I'm saying when I say that is, I can prove what I'm saying. Now, it can be very devastating. For example, if there's a Michael Hood out there right now, Chairman here could issue a permit for the tribal police to arrest them. And they could arrest them for trespass. Federal trespass. So these issues have been in place for better than a hundred years. But our schools do not teach the truth. They do not teach uh, what the treaties are about. What is a treaty, for example? what a treaty is? How about you standing up back? You know what a treaty is? Supreme law of the land. The what? Supreme law of the land. Not quite. <laughs> a treaty is a contract between, in this case, 
between two nations. We have a contract with the United States and the Nashville tribe. Now the question arises, if one nation doesn't like the treaty, can they amend it? No, they cannot. The Bolton didn't did that, they're back in 1964. The tribes haven't ever declared it to be illegal yet. But there are many cases out there that the tribes have overlooked because they've never been, never been brought to their attention. I wasn't told about this meeting until about half an hour ago, and they said you go sit in on it and listen in on what they got to say. But it's kind of interesting. The state actually has no jurisdiction over its own people. Have no fishing rights, no hunting rights, no travel rights. Unless they have a permit from the tribe. Again, I don't have my law books with me, but I do have my home. My most latest case is, or was, about, about six months ago. Federal taxation with the Caldwell tribe. And I was successful with that case, and we won it. Tribes do not pay federal taxes. And we also brought out the final road. And that was determined that in that same case that they can build a road through the reservation and they have to maintain them also. But no jurisdiction. And I helped them draft their, their law on their road jurisdiction about 20 years ago. They, I was working up there and they called me up and they knew I did some legal work. The those of you that don't really understand, uh, I've been lecturing for about 30 years now on city rights issues throughout the Northwest and uh, been involved in several other cases besides the one I just mentioned. But I noticed some of the guys are leaving and they don't like what I'm saying. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to get worse. If the state wouldn't pursue this, the county wouldn't pursue it, the tribe has the right to make an arrest. They can do it. They can put a car or a uh, tribal police car out in the middle of the highway, cut them down. And that's legal. It's already been proven. Free Richard Perez would have taken no. No problem. I'm not taking any notes. No.